On behalf of the American Legion Community Band and our sponsors, the Giles B. Cook Post 53 of the American Legion, and on behalf of our host, the Warren County Parks and Recreation Department, welcome to the annual Front Royal Warren County Independence Day concert. We regret that the Northern Virginia 4-H Education and Conference Center had to cancel the fireworks and was unable to host us this year, but we truly appreciate the Warren County Parks and Recreation Department who very graciously jumped in at the last minute and is sponsoring this concert. We're glad you came and we hope you enjoy the concert. Now for our most important announcement of the evening. The restrooms are right over here through the green door, right up this path, right up the stairs here. Our conductors uh, tonight will be uh, Ronald Dye, Ed Richards, Bob Johnson, and Mark Malchek. My name is Chris Fries. I'm filling in for John Vance, who couldn't do the narrating tonight, but he made it to the concert. He's right back there now. So a good round of applause for John. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would please rise for our national anthem. Inspired by a visit to a Union Army camp during the American Civil War, Julia Ward Howe wrote the famous poem, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Her poem immediately achieved great popularity as a song of the Civil War when William Steff put the uh, poem to music. Peter Wilhowski has given us what is probably the best known and most recognizable arrangement of the classic piece of American music. The American Legion Community Band is proud to perform Peter Wachowski's arrangement of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And if you would help me welcome to the podium at this time, Mr. Ron Dye to conduct. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Battle Hymn of the Republic.
Our next march by John Philip Sousa was dedicated to the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York, and performed there in 1901 by the Sousa Band. Part of Sousa's motivation for writing this composition was in knowing that another march for the same ex exposition was being written by Francesco Fanciulli, Sousa's successor as leader of the Marine Band in 1892. Fanciulli was actually arrested and court-martialed in 1897 when he refused to obey a superior officer's order to perform a Sousa march. Fanciulli's exposition march, The Electric Century, was never as popular as this march. I think it's important to note that Sousa thought this marvelous 6-8 march was the equal of his most famous march, Stars and Stripes Forever. This is Sousa's The Invisible, or the, the Invincible Eagle. <laughs> Good been invisible. The band's next arrangement by Alfred Reed will have you tapping your toes and snapping your fingers as you imagine life in River City, Iowa in the early 20th century as the citizens fall under the influence of the spellbinding musical instrument salesman, Professor Harold Hill. You'll feel the excitement as the entire town awaits the arrival of the Wells Fargo wagon to deliver the musical instruments for the new boys band 
and the romance between Professor Hill and the town's piano teacher and librarian, Miss Marion. Finally, the whole city comes alive as 76 trombones leads the big parade. This is highlights from the Music Man.
The band's next selection, arrangement by John Moss, is a unique change of pace featuring the familiar strains of the Latin classic, The Peanut Vendor. Welcome to the podium at this time, Mr. Ed Richards. <laughs> Widely considered one of the greatest songwriters in American history, Irving Berlin wrote hundreds of songs, many becoming major hits, which made him a legend before he turned 30. During his 60-year career, he wrote an estimated 1,500 songs including the scores for 19 Broadway shows and 18 Hollywood films, with his songs nominated eight times for Academy Awards. The community band will now perform a medley of his songs, which includes This is the Army, Mr. Jones, Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor, This is a Great Country, and the ever-popular God Bless America. This is James Swearingen's arrangement titled Irving Berlin's Song for America.
During World War II, Winston Churchill initiated the formation of special force commando units that were so effective that they changed the course of the war. In 2013, they were awarded the highest honor of the U.S. government can give collectively and bestowed on an entire unit, the Congressional Gold Medal. This is a stirring concert march by Paul Murtha that pays tribute to this legendary unit. This is Black Devils, March of the First Special Service Force. In the fall of 1963, our country virtually came to a standstill when it was reported that John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, had been shot. Unlike today, there were no television cameras present, no internet access, no cable news coverage, or even portable camcorders to document the President's motorcade through the downtown city of Dallas, Texas. Pictures that do exist of the event are primarily from photographic stills. 
This inability to see live news feeds only added to the uncertainty of what was transpiring on that historic day. Fortunately, one gentleman had his 8mm home movie camera running from a re relatively good vantage point on, in Dealey Plaza. This is the famous Zapruder film, now held by the National Archives. Reportedly, it is classified as the only official film record that captured the assassination. The band's next selection is a musical reflection on the life and times of President John F. Kennedy. It is a small glimpse of his early life, excerpts from his presidential speeches, and a rare opportunity to reflect back through our own imaginations on the tragic events of November 22nd, 1963. Please welcome Jeff Peterson to narrate James Swearingen's arrangement of Ask Not. Etched on a granite wall below a grave in Arlington National Cemetery, one can read the following words. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born in Brookline, Massachusetts on May 29, 1917. Jack, as he was often called, was the second child of Joseph and Rose Kennedy, and together his parents raised nine children. He attended Harvard University, where he graduated with honors. In World War II, he served in the Navy and commanded PT-109. When the ship was sunk, he risked his life to save his crew. Serving his country helped to shape his thoughts on the future of America's right to defend its freedom. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Let the word go forth from this place and time to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans. JFK was the youngest man elected to the office of president. He was the first Boy Scout to become president. John Kennedy was the first Roman Catholic president. He was the first president that served in the Navy and the first to have earned a Purple Heart. The main challenges of his term in office were the conflicts with Cuba, Russia, Vietnam, the Mafia, and concerns regarding civil rights. Hear the words of newly elected President Kennedy as he prepared to face the uncertainty of what would surely become his lasting legacy. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. President Kennedy was an ardent supporter of the civil rights movement. He, along with his noted activist friend, Martin Luther King, worked long and hard to help bring about positive change. On June 11th, 1963, he addressed the nation and proclaimed the following thoughts. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal and that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. I am therefore asking this Congress to enact legislation giving all Americans the right to be served in facilities which are open to the public, hotels, restaurants, theaters, retail stores, and similar establishments. 
This seems to me to be an elementary right. Its denial is an arbitrary indignity that no American in 1963 should have to endure. In the fall of 1963, President Kennedy turned his attention to his re-election campaign and decided that a trip to the South was long overdue. With First Lady Jacqueline by his side, he embarked on a two-day trip that would take him to five major cities in the heartland of Texas. On the morning of November 2nd, 1963, a motorcade of political dignitaries traveled along a 10-mile route that wound through downtown Dallas. Since the earlier rain had stopped, the plastic bubble on the top of the presidential limousine was removed. Overflow crowds of excited people lined the streets and waved frantically to the Kennedys. At approximately 12.30 p.m., the car turned off Main Street. As it was passing the Texas School Book Depository, gunfire suddenly rang out in the plaza. Let us reflect on the events of that day and remember that life, as we knew it, was about to be changed. three shots fired struck the president, causing him to slump over toward Mrs. Kennedy. The limousine sped off to Parkland Memorial Hospital, located just a few minutes away. However, doctors could do little to save him. A Catholic priest was summoned to administer last rites, and at 1 p.m., John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, was pronounced dead. For four days, the world stood still while people from all walks of life mourned the loss of their beloved JFK. On November 25th, he was laid to rest. As people struggled to make sense of a senseless act and to articulate their feelings about his life and legacy, many recalled these words from his inaugural address. With a good conscience, our only sure reward with history is the final judge of our deeds. Let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking for his blessings and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own.
Please help me welcome to the podium at this time, Mr. Bob Johnson. Composed for the video game Civilizations 4 by Christopher Ten, the band's next song has quickly gained popularity outside of the gaming world and won a Grammy Award for the Best Instrumental Arrangement accompanying a vocalist category. This is a dramatic and moving setting that will enjoy acclaim as serious music for generations of gamers and non-gamers alike. Here is Douglas Wagner's Baba Yetu. Our next march was written by Louis Pinella, a march composer and trumpet player from Pittsburgh. Pinella performed with a number of orchestras, including the Pittsburgh Symphony, and taught trumpet for many years at the Carnegie Institute of Technology, now Carnegie Mellon University. Many of his marches have patriotic titles or references, the most famous of which was the march he composed in honor of the American Red Cross which was meant to honor the humanitarian work of the American Red Cross during World War I. Arranged for modern concert band by Andrew Glover, this is the American Red Cross March. 
The decade of the 80s gave us an eclectic blend of musical styles and colorful personalities. The band's next selection is an action-packed sampling of the top hits from this rich period of popular music. It includes Thriller with Michael Jackson, Time After Time, Cyndi Lauper, You Give Love a Bad Name, Bon Jovi, Up Where We Belong, Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warnes, and Eye of the Tiger, Survivor. Get ready for us to rock the house as we play Paul Murtha's 80s flashback. <laughs>
The traditional folk song, Boys of Wexford, was a favorite of John F. Kennedy, and this arrangement was written for the United States Marine Band at his request. It was arranged by a true master, Sammy Nastico. This is a delightful march by anyone's standard. This is the Boys of Wexford. My mistake. <laughs> Would you please help me welcome warmly to the podium, Mark Malachek. Catherine Lee Bates was inspired to write the poem America the Beautiful when, while on a vacation trip in 19, 1893, she first saw the view from the top of Pikes Peak. Samuel Augustus Ward put her poem to music and the song was actually almost chosen as the national anthem instead of the Star Spangled Banner. The Carmen Dragon arrangement of America the Beautiful is one of the most famous settings of this famous patriotic song. Ladies and gentlemen, America the Beautiful.
The community band has been very fortunate to receive tremendous support since its founding in 1986. We would like to thank our sponsors, Giles B. Cook, Post 53 of the American Legion, for providing financial support for the band, having spent many, many thousands of dollars over the years to purchase both music and equipment. We offer our thanks to Randolph Macon Academy for providing the band free of charge, rehearsal facilities, the use of band equipment, and the use of its chapel and gymnasium for many of our performances. This evening, we also offer special thanks to Don Lenz and the staff of the Warren County Parks and Recreation Department, making this facility available to us on very short notice and for sponsoring this event. Finally, we thank you, our audience, for your loyalty and support. To all of our supporters, we offer our heartfelt thanks. The Front Royal American Legion Community Band is always looking for new members. If you would like to join the band, please speak to one of our members after the performance this evening. This is the community band's final concert of the summer season. The band will take a break from rehearsals until after Labor Day. The band rehearses every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. in the Fulton Fine Arts Complex at Randolph-Macon Academy. The band's next rehearsal will be on Tuesday, September 4th. Before we close our program this evening, Sadly, we must wish one of our conductors, Mal Mark Malachek, goodbye as he is moving from the area to accept a new teaching position as the band director at his high school alma mater, New, Ca new Kent County High School, located between Richmond and Williamsburg in Eastern Virginia. Mark and his wife Jennifer joined the community band in March of 2010. They both quickly became an integral part of the group. Both are talented music educators Mark plays the euphonium, and Jennifer has played clarinet, percussion, and is currently playing flute. <laughs> Shortly after joining the band, Mark assumed duties as a conductor. He quickly earned a reputation for his expression, expressive gestures at the podium. He has been a backbone of the band who will be sorely missed. So Mark, we wish you Godspeed, and good luck with your new, or maybe I should say, your old band. <laughs> we wish you and Jennifer the best. And if I could just take one more moment. The band has a small token of their appreciation for Mark, and I hope he can hang it in his new office. It's from the American Legion Community Band of Front Royal. Certificate of, Pre of Appreciation presented to Mark Malchek. Thank you for over eight years of outstanding conducting and mu musicianship from 2010 to 2018. We have a round of applause for Mark and Mark. The American Legion Community Band would like to honor those veterans in our audience who have served or anyone who currently serves our nation and the armed forces. Our next selection is a medley of the songs of the armed forces, including the Army, Coast Guard, Marines, Air Force, and Navy. Please stand as the song of your service branch is played. This is Bob Loudon's arrangement of Armed Forces Salute.
That concludes the program tonight. Thank you all for being here. Have a great 4th of July. Drive home safely and buckle up. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will.